Alright, sorry about that. I tried to set up my um, desk area and recording area um, differently and it didn't work. So I'm back to the old way that I used to do it. Uh, give me a second and I really do apologise for that. Hello again, Fran. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, you might be able to tell that I'm talking a little bit differently and that is basically because I have no teeth. Um, it's the oddest feeling and I do get very dry after talking for a while so I'll probably be taking lots of sips of water to keep me going. But this process is just going on and on and I thought I can't hold off so I thought I'd give a video a go and see if it's going to work. Um, it's still going to be a while before I get my dentures because I tried to have a mould made the other day and apparently I'm a gagger. Um, he got the bottom mould done but I couldn't get the top one in which is the main one. So I don't know what's going to happen there but you don't think of all this when you're getting your teeth out. What's going to happen? You just think you're going to slip a denture in but it's not as easy as all that. So hang on, I'll be right back. Oh, I just got to check that everything's the right way. Oh, everything's recording the right way now. I'm hoping my phone doesn't shut down. I had to remove some apps off my phone because Facebook just kept shutting down. So hopefully this will get through. If it doesn't, I will just record a normal video and upload it. Um, this will be on my blog and with all the the um, trimming guide and everything um, so let's get started alright no reason oh dear alright this is the easiest way for me to display it um, this is the first one I made and then I had another play the other day um, they're just an easel fold, but it's just three of them. Now you can see um, it's folding it over. And I did two sort of different ones. Um, I do like to play with one first just to get a, an idea of what I'm doing. Um, I got this from Tina Zink, I think. That was a video that I watched. Um, there was a few other different ways to do it. That was the first one I, I looked at and I thought, that's pretty cool. I can make that. Alright. So this was the first one. Um, and I've just used, I can't remember whatever that was, whatever that set was. Um, so that was my first one. And just turn it over. And this is the one that I'm going to be remaking today. Now I haven't got a sample of the one that I'm doing. I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants and hope that it works out. Um, I've used the DSP from the hand pen petals because I just love it it's the most beautiful paper and I've used the encircled in friendship stamps and the um, the dies which are actually a perfect size for all those little panels and I for this strip down here I've used the ornate I can't read it ornate layers dies and I've used one of the dies out of that so it folds flat and what you do is you fold the first one, fold the second one, and then fold the next one over the top. So it's quite bulky. Um, I had to think about it last night, and I'm actually going to add some ribbon around it just to hold it, hold it together. So that is our card that we're going to make today. All right, so I'll just pop that one to the side. All right, here are all the measurements. This will also be on the blog, so you don't need to write all this down. Um, you'll need one card base, so you've got a base on the bottom. Um, this one I've used pink uh, because I wanted it to show through my um, die cutting. And this one I've used just basic white. Don't use the thick because it's quite a bulky card. Um, so just use basic white. Um, you'll need the three easel panels, uh, which are the sizes. You card stock all your DSP layers, which you need two of each and a strip down the bottom and that is all of that all right so don't worry about writing these down they will be on the blog for you to get later 
Alright, here's the three strips. Now you need a 12 inch, so I've used the basic white 12 inch. You've got a 12 by 4, a 3 by 9, and I think a 2 by 6. And we're just going to score them. Whoops. Oh, nice breeze coming through my window. Alright, scoreboard. Alright, now I've done mine in different colours. Um, it's up to you. On this one, I did all white layers. But for this one, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Alright, so we want 4, 6 and 8. And 4, 6 and 8. And then I fold them straight away. So one goes that way. So the middle one. And then you just fold the other two. Whoops. Can't see my score line. And fold the other two out. Alright, so you get like a little a little M. So the next one was three. They're very quick to put together and they're quite addictive. I kind of I like being able to whip up something really quickly with a bit of um, designer series paper. Alright, you're all still getting this. Yep, still recording. Alright, so the middle one and you make another M. And this little one is two, three, and four. Oh, my lovely Martha Stewart scoreboard, I love it. Alright, that one goes in. And then flip those ones over. Now, I struggled at the beginning. I got very confused with how to put it together. Um, sometimes it takes a while for the penny to drop to figure it out. So I actually did a little um, template. So there's one of your panels. This is a 3x9. There you've got your middle fold and your other two. So there's your end. So what you're actually going to do is you, this will be the base. So you put your base piece here. Flip it over. Put your easel piece here. This is the bit that's going to show. And then between that score, the middle one and that one, that gets glued together. Alright, and then that creates your easel fold. Alright, so I got, that was just easy for me to, to remember which part is going to get glued. That was the main bit, which, which was the panel that was going to get glued. So alright, so your base and the glue bit goes there, flip it over and that's your easel bit. So glue it and flip it over and it's like a little chair all right so that is all we do all right so let's see if i can do this with this one right all my panels i've decided to go with yellow just so that it would be easier for you to see your panels are three and three quarters two and three quarters and one and three quarters you can double it up and go down another one um, if you want two layers but as you can see it's already quite bulky um, so I just settle for the one layer and the same for the top panel so these ones will be the bottom and these ones are going to be the top so two three and three quarters two and three quarters and one and three quarters I don't often um, glue and do all this as I'm going through a card I usually have it prepared but today I'm going to do it and of course I put the bottle it wasn't open Alright, so if we're following my little guide, alright, I'll leave that there. So the base on my card is going to be the pattern. Whoops, new bottle, all squishy. Alright, hang on. I'm a tweezer person. Alright, alright, that'll be, whoops. Oh goodness. Too much glue on that because it was freshly out of the bottle. Oh goodness. If it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong today. Alright, I'm getting them out of the way so we've got some more light. Alright, so the base, that's where the um, adhesive is going to go. So flip it right over. And I've actually just done Daffodil Delight and I've embossed with my Never To Get Rid Of Subtle Embossing Folder. I'll never get rid of that. I've got two of them just in case one breaks and I can't get another one. 
Very easy. Alright, so going by my guide, I'm going to glue in there. And that's just going to get attached to that. Right, and there's the first one. So I'll quickly go, and that glue is so sticky. All right, so where's my other panels? Oh, here they are. All right, so we'll do a yellow one, do the middle panel. I'm not really looking at which way my waves are going. Flip it over, put the uh, other two and three quarter one in. I hope my camera hasn't moved. No. Right, and that's going to be where the glue goes. Probably after making a dozen or so of these, I won't need the little guide, but just for now. Right, and there's our second one, and our last little tiny one which will be the 2 by 6 I think I said it was oops, oh, glue under that oh, I'm getting a shadow there oh, flip it over now like I said I haven't made a sample of this so I don't know how it's going to turn out but if we just stick with couple of colours, two or three colours, it should be fine. Alright, and the glue goes in there. So if it helps you to do a, a test one of these and keep it there, that's what I did. There's no shame in it. Alright, now we have our three little here and that. Okay, with that, here it is. Alright, so just give them a good score. Oop, make sure it doesn't stick. Oop. Oh, there's that one. Give me a good score. And the last one. I am a bit rough. Alright, so there's our three panels. So what we need now is our base, and I'm using the same Daffodil Delight um, for the base, but before I do that, um, the next thing I have to do, and now I have no idea where it is, oh here it is, oops, sorry, I'm just going to die cut that little um, decorative flourish, or whatever it is, because I'm going to put that on the bottom across there. Now this is a 4x1 piece and it fits perfectly for this die. Right, I'll try not to shake the table. Probably could have had this pre-done. Oop, table's shaking, sorry. I love the little patterns that it leaves in there. <laughs> It'd be nice to um, use it as a stencil, I think. All right, and that little one came from the ornate layer of dies. That was a little one in there. All right, let's get rid of all that. Yep, done. All right, so. We're going to grab our 4x5 and that is just going to sit flush on the bottom. And these are fun to glue. And of course I've got a new bottle, it's going to squirt out everywhere. And I'll just do a couple of little dots to keep that down. Yep. Alright, so it's going to go flush with the bottom. Oop. Oh, 
and then that gives you enough room where that sits flush to the top. All right, the so next thing, glue the back of the base of the easel fold. Oh, it's a very juicy bottle. Oh, that's going to go flush against that little strip. Oh, I've got glue everywhere. Okay, don't. And that does look crooked. I'll put that panel on crooked. Oh, oh that's horrible. All right. All right, so there's your first one already done. Grab your second one. Put your glue on the bottom of that. And this one is going to sit about halfway down that four, one inch strip. Just eyeball it. And there's the second one. Alright, so there you've got one and you've got two. Alright, I'll show you how to fix that. Alright, and the third one, the little one, same thing again, and I've done my, my strips upside down as well. Done my little waves, but that's alright. And this last one goes flush with the edge. I'm trying to get the shadow out of that. And there's the last one. And there, that is simply all you do. Very easy. Trouble that I have is having some of them to stand up. So I just keep scoring it a bit more. Right. And that one. Oh gosh, I can't get it down. Right. I'll score it a bit harder. Right. It will stand up after a bit of playing with it. There we go. And this one, the back one I found was a little bit trickier to stay up. Oh, there we go. I got it. All right, the decorating part of it, embellishing. I'll put those aside. All right, I probably could have done them first, but I like to put the panel together before I start putting all the embellishments on it. All right, so using the encircled in French dies, I've done one of the outline and just one of the um, the larger one, uh, the second largest one, and there's a circle that comes out of it, but I'm going to go get back to that. The middle one, there's a, I'll explain that. Um, I did the middle one in um, the Daffodil Delight, and that will have a white circle on it. Like I said, I haven't made a sample of this, so I'm just hoping this is all going to work out. Um, then I've done, I think, the second smallest one, and I've done a scalloped Daffodil Delight circle, all using the circle dies, the layering circle dies, and the smallest circle die, which is going to go in there. So these are my three circles. Normally, I would stamp directly onto um, these three panels, but because I'm going to use, I'm going to use the same um, stamp set, but because it's not a clear stamp, it's not a photopolymer stamp, it's a red rubber, I actually find it easier if I just stamp again straight on um, basic white or, yeah, basic white, and then I can die cut um, exactly where I want it to go. So I'm just going to, Whoops, don't lose that. All right, so that's the largest one. So we'll put one there. Oh, pretty. So that'll be the largest one. That way I can 
now I can actually die cut it directly in the center because I'm like that I have to have it in the center maybe able to fit that one there but I'm not going to try it I'll do the smaller one and I think I've used one of the um, um, you're the best out of the encircled in friendship set like I said you could stamp directly on that but I like to make sure it's dead center and upside down all right and on this one I will do uh, I'm just going to stamp a couple um, hmm. I think no don't like that all right so we'll do one there and one there all right and that will be the second one so now I can die cut that directly in the center Back again, if I can find my scissors. Oh. That's just how I do it because I like things centered in the middle. If it was a clear stamp, one of our photopolymer ones, definitely I could stamp straight on the circles. Oh. I want that one about there. That one dead centre, and where's my little circle? There it is. There we go. And now I need the other plate. There it is. circles and that one all done all right well, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do with these so let's see what they look like on the card now with this one I did some shading around the circle so I might try a little bit of that but let's see what the white looks like directly on it. It might look nice just plain black and white without all that shading. And there's that one. And that's the yellow one. And that's why I put the card together first so I can get an idea of how things are going to look. And that one goes there. Hmm, that might not need any shading. I might do a little bit. And then a bit of colouring and then that's it. Alright. So, I've got some Daffodil Delight. Got the old pad still. And I've got one of my blending brushes. Just very gently around the edge because you don't want it too dark. It's more just a soften soften the card a little bit I'm only doing around the edge All right. let's see what that layer looks like yep see that just softened it so much just by adding that little bit of highlight around the edge and with the flowers, I thought I might just colour them a little bit. I don't often do a lot of... I'm not very good at colouring. I'm very rough. Oops, I don't think that's right. But I might just do some yellow flowers. I'm the world's worst colourer. Especially with these blends. I don't know why, I just... And I'm just going to add a little bit of the darker one. Hey, how yeah, professional I am. <laughs> and I think I've got some, what colour are these? Soft sea foam. I might just add a little bit of soft sea foam.
Like I said, I don't know if this is gonna, what this is going to look like. Yep, that's all right. There we go, it's coming together. And then with this one, I also blended around the edge. So I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to do the same again. And try not to do it too heavy. And you're probably wondering why I'm using such a huge brush. It's my favourite one. <laughs> it colours beautifully. Alright. Oh, what do you think of that? Does that look alright? Alright. We'll do the next one. So that one I didn't have to colour that. Because it was already coloured. And I'm going to get that centred with the... Oh, like that. That one, we'll colour those. Oh, very quickly. Oh, going outside the lines, doesn't matter. Um, um, yellow. And a bit of highlight. And a bit of dark. A bit of dark on those. There we go. Okay. And blend around the edge of that one so it matches the other one. that one while I'm here. Just blending softens it a little bit. Alright, done. So now we're just going to attach it all and that's the fun part. Uh, uh, I just put a little bit around the circle if I can get it out. And doesn't want to come out, there we go. And then just kind of a couple of dots around the edge. If I can get some out. It's a new bottle, it should be squirting everywhere. That's it. And I think I've shown you this trick before. Oh. Oh. To get it so you don't get glue all over your fingers, I just use a bit of scrap paper. Alright, now that's going to get attached through the panel hold that down right. see how it just fits perfectly on that panel a little bit bigger than the circle that came out of there but you can put whatever size you like in there you can put a bit bigger one in uh, the first one uh, wax them all over it uh, get the pattern right this one's just a smidge bigger than the panel, but that's alright. Oh, and that doesn't like me again. Oh, oh I mounted those. I just realised that I mounted them. 
I will mount this one with some dimensionals. That's probably why it's made it a bit thicker because I've done some mounting. Oh my god, I've got so much glue on my fingers, everything's sticking to me. Oh, won't be able to get these off. Oh. I'll just put that on there. Alright. Yep, we're getting there. Oh. Yeah. Alright, the last one. Um, oh, I blended that one as well. A little bit around the edges. Oh, a bit darker. Whoops. Whoopsie, I do lots of whoopsies. Alright, so we'll pop that one on. the right way. Um, then I can't remember what I did before. Oh, then I stuck that one down. You can barely see the um, the scalloped one, but the next one scalloped, the second smallest one was too big. But that's all right. I know it's there. Goodness. Oh goodness, the glue dots. I would normally put more glue dots on that. Probably not though. And mounting that one. Well it didn't turn out too bad considering I didn't make a um a sample of that. Alright, so the last thing you need is something to hold up. Um, the, the smaller easel. Um, on this one I just uh, die cut a very thin sentiment um, to hold that up. On this one I just added some pearls and on this one I thought I might add some of the gilded gems. Right, have a look. Just to hold that panel up. Oh, I might use a big one in the middle. Alright, so we want it to we want it to sit about there. So we need a big one and two little ones. Alright, you want something that's gonna hold that up. Alright, let's have a look. That's it. Little one. Middle one. That still needs a bit more. Once you add those panels, it just needs a bit more creasing. Right. Oh, you little bugger. This is the trouble I had. Sometimes it doesn't like to stand up. Is that one? Oh, you little bugger. Oh dear, what's going on? There we go. You just got to keep pressing, um, scoring, uh, folding the score line a bit until it stays up. Yep, and that one's not going to stay up either. Alright, so that probably just needs a bit more under there. There we go. And there we have it. All done. And there's a pink one. There's a nice yellow one. Alright. So there's our card. And close up. Ain't that pretty? And that's how you do a triple easel fold, um, courtesy of Xena Zinc's um, instructions and tutorial. There you go, I quite like that. Very pretty. Very nice for a grandma. Grandma would love something in those colours. The only thing I should have mounted that one. So then we fold the first one down, fold the next one, 
and fold the last one over. So as you can see, it's quite a a bulky um, card. Um, you could use the back panel for writing on. You could put a what I thought yesterday, and I've now lost it. I had some. Oh, I had some ribbon. Oh, where'd that go? I had a big strip of ribbon. Oh, here we go. I've got some other ribbon. Um, I just thought maybe. I mean, that one there, you can also add a bit of ribbon around it, like what I did on this one. Um, I added the ribbon around that top panel, so that when it was closed, there was a bit of ribbon there. The pink one, I didn't, but then I thought maybe you might just want to wrap some... I don't even know what colour this is. It doesn't have a label on it, but I'm assuming it's a, like a daffodil delight. Um, like with colouring, I stuck with doing bows. So this is just an afterthought that I had last night. So get in there. So maybe you might have to make a special envelope, but we'll see. I'll get one of mine and test it. Um, I don't normally do a double knot, but yeah, I'm not the great at bows, especially when I've got glue all on my fingers. Uh, you wouldn't do a double one anyway because you're going to open it but I right, so could maybe put a bit of um, ribbon around it and I've twisted it good girl you've done well and then you could put and I had one here and for the life of me I don't know where it went oh, here we go you could probably put um, something over the back of it to maybe um, to write on that was something that I thought of last night. So maybe it's a bit of ribbon to hold it close, and once that's attached, that ribbon will stay stay on the card. And I'll just grab an envelope and let's see if it's going. Just standard envelope. Yep, that's going to fit perfectly in the envelope. So it'd be a bit bulky for mailing. Um, as you can see, it's a, a little bit bulky for mailing, so you wouldn't get out of it with the standard mailing rate. You'd have to pay a bit extra. But um, So that was just something I thought of, to maybe hold it all together. Um, obviously, you wouldn't do a double knot, which I've now ruined because I stupidly did a double knot. All right, but that was just a, an extra suggestion. So here's all the three cards. Oh, oh. Now, so they pop up as well that's why I think the ribbon would be a good idea to hold them down oh, oh. okay that's all I have for you today I hope you understood all my words um, I'll go and um, upload this to my I've already started the blog I've just got to add the video to it and um, you can get all the dimensions from the blog Okay, hope you, oh actually I'll just go quickly check my messages, hang on, just before I go in case someone has a question. Oh. Hang on, I'll be back in a sec, alright, alright, oh. Can you fold it to go in an envelope? Yep, I've just answered that. Love the shout out to Tina, she's my upline. Cool. Isn't it funny? Isn't it, uh, uh, no, nobody's got any questions. Um, isn't it funny? I don't hear the birds in the background. And yet I always get comments on my Facebook Live that people hear the beautiful bird. We've just got a little family of magpies and they were just out the back in my little bucket of water having a bath in it. It was so cute. Um, been watching them in the nest for, for months and been waiting for them to get out of the nest and they only came out of the nest last week. So we've got some lovely magpies. All right, that's it for me. Um, I'm going to go clean up and finish my blog. Thank you all for joining me and... Um, Thanks Tina Zink for um, this tutorial and I hope you go off and make some in all sorts of different colours and um, post them and show me what you've done. 
Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh, hi, Di. <laughs> Bye.